Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Charity. And I'm Ben. And in 2018, Ben quit his job. We bought an RV and took off to travel full time with our four kids. In this video today, we are gonna talk about some of our favorite campgrounds. And when we talk about some of our favorite campgrounds, let's just say we've visited a lot of campgrounds over the last two years, and there are several that we have on our list that we want to go back and visit. And so today, we are gonna talk about those campgrounds that we definitely would visit a second time because we absolutely love them that much. So be sure to stay till the end to the very last campground because that one is our ultimate favorite. So the first campground that we absolutely love, that we would love to go back to, is Flagler by the Sea in Flagler Beach, Florida. Amazing. Now, this campground is amazing for multiple reasons, but the biggest drawing factor is it is pretty much right on the beach. There is a private beach area just for that particular campground and there's a freshwater rinse as you just come up the steps over a little dune into the campground. And probably one of the best things that we enjoyed about this campground was, do you remember what it was? The best part about it is that our RV was backed right up to the beach. So at night we fell asleep listening to the waves. It was amazing. You could hear the sound of the waves, even over our air conditioners crashing against the shore. And, you know, people put those noise machines or things like that in their room for ocean wave sounds. You didn't have to simulate that. It was real. It was right there, right outside of the RV. And so that was yeah. so cool. Or even in the morning waking up and, and just hearing that sound and coming outside the rig and having a cup of coffee on the side of the rig and just hearing those ocean waves crashing and just the smells that you get off of the ocean shore, that super clean kind of salty breeze smell. It was amazing. And the sand had like a, a little bit of red stone in it. So it was actually a little warm to walk on. But the nice thing was, is you didn't have to walk far. I mean, you were literally right on the beach and so even to you know haul our stuff down to the beach i didn't even use our wagon normally when we stay at beach areas i load up our little wagon and we walk down to the beach but this yeah. beach you didn't even have to do that you could really easily just throw a chair over your shoulder and grab your bag and go back to your rig to grab something to eat or to take a nap if you wanted to we're the, just taking a nap on the beach. We're taking a nap on the beach. So that's the best. And the kids loved it. The waves were really good for them for boogie boarding. We found some of the best finds there as far as the larger uh, clam type shells on that particular beach. And it was just so peaceful because it's a private beach to that campground. So there were very, very few people on it. Um, the campground in and of itself is fairly small. Yeah, it was pretty tight. Um, it was quarters. a tight fit. When we pulled in that night, the people next to us were basically giving Ben a standing ovation on his backing <laughs> skills because the, the sites are pretty close together. You're trying to put a lot of RVs in kind of a smaller area. It did have complete full hookups, which was nice. It did have a bathhouse and a laundry area um, that were smaller and they weren't always the cleanest because there's just a lot of people with sand on their feet and things like that using those. But we just used the facilities inside of our own rig. So we didn't even really make use of their facilities, even though they were there and they were available to use. Yeah, and it's really not that far from Daytona and there's a nice little bike path that you can take your bike on. Um, I did a couple mornings and it takes you right alongside the road, beautiful scenery, and uh, takes you right down uh, to the beach if you want to ride down by there. Right, so. it's right off of the Florida A1A highway. So again, just super close to the beach. It's easy to jump on the A1A and go down to Daytona. We did a day trip down to Daytona Beach while we were staying at that particular campground and into um, the town of Daytona, as well as met up with some friends while we were there that were in another area of Florida. So very centrally located, St. Augustine is just 45 minutes up the road. 
So very, very easy access into St. Augustine. Just a wonderful campground that we would definitely go back to. We'll put a link below to this particular campground so that you can check it out and make reservations if you want to stay there. So our second pick that we would go back to, and we actually have gone back to this campground more than once, is the campground at Myrtle Beach State Park in South Carolina. Now this campground, there are so many cool things about this campground, which is why we've actually gone back there now twice. And we would go again, even Absolutely. though we've been there twice. The campground in and of itself is very large. There's lots of options as far as different types of sites. So there's RV sites, there's tent sites. The first time we went, we just had a water and electric. The second time we went, we had the full hookups. So that was nice to be able to have all full hookups. When we went the first time, we filled up our gray tank faster than what we thought we would fill it up. So it got well, a little bit sketchy, I, like on day three. I think that's before we really taught the kids how to preserve water. So that was... It's probably not the kids. Dakota. It's probably me, actually. Mm. <laughs> probably it's totally mm -hmm. me. <laughs> <laughs> but they have tons of amenities. They have bathhouses, showers, and the showers are really nice. They're not, you know in disrepair or anything like that. They have laundry facilities, which I did use the laundry facilities there. The laundry facilities are great. It is just a short walk to the beach. So you're not right on the beach as far as where the campground goes, but it's, you know, maybe a quarter mile or maybe even less really yeah, to just, just walk to the beach from the campground. Yeah. We just bring one of those little wagons that we stroll right behind. Yeah, us. there we loaded up the wagon to walk down to the beach to spend time down at the beach. And the other thing that's nice is because it's a state park, the fees to stay there are considerably less than the other private or more commercial RV resorts that are in the area. And so we love being able to stay there just because the rates are so much lower for essentially the same type of beach access as some of the other more commercial RV resorts. The other thing is, is because it's a state park, they have ranger led programs that are like nature programs for the kids. So they can participate in nature programs and they have nature talks and they have some hiking trails. It's a really cool, like wooded area. Yeah. Beautiful. Do you remember like you would hear the cicada? I mean, you, there was so much. So many trees that so you many hear. trees, but also a lot of bug just noise. But it was fun because it really felt like that you were out in nature. You know, you didn't feel like that you were in a commercial type of RV environment, but it really felt a little bit more kind of like camping. In the backwoods. As much as glamping is like camping, but it's a really, really cool park. And we would go back again. We've been there twice already, but we would definitely go back a third time. And if you have never stayed there, you definitely need to put that on your list of places to go. And we'll put a link in the description below to the Myrtle Beach State Park, and you can make reservations online. We do recommend making those reservations quickly because they do fill up very quickly. Both times that we stayed there, we had made our reservations online at least six months in advance of when we wanted to go. So if you want to go, you definitely need to plan for that well in advance and make those reservations. So now this third one is the second largest KOA in the United States. And it is? It's Mount Rushmore KOA, or it's also known as the Palmer Gulch Resort in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And we'll put a link above to our full video on that particular campground. But this campground, we've actually stayed there more than once and we would go back again. Before we had an RV, we just wanted to be able to kind of take a long weekend in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And so they have cabins, they have a lodge, which is more kind of like a hotel area. And then they have the entire RV park. So the very first time we ever went, we actually did stay in the lodge when our right. son was just an infant. Yeah. And then we went back a second time and we stayed in one of the cabins yeah, where we had like a little kitchenette, but we also had a wood burning stove, which was just fun. <laughs> you, you know, you felt like you're staying in, in a cabin. Yeah, you'd have to get up in the middle of the night and stock it. 
right? Just, it was a cooler time of year. And uh, then this most recent visit that we did this past summer was finally in an RV. Much and better experience. So it was a whole lot of fun just, you know, when you have your home with you really to be able to stay there. But this campground is a KA resort and they have amenities galore. This is one of those places where if you didn't want to leave the campground, you wouldn't have to. You could definitely just stay there and have plenty of things to do. They have horseback riding in a gaga ball pit and playgrounds and... Don't forget about the jumpy pillow. The big jumping pillow. They have all sorts of fun things for families to do. They have like events in the evenings the night that we pulled in they had like a big sort of glow party thing going on after dark it's just a really cool place the other thing is is they have restaurants right on site that serve really good food and so one night we just didn't want to cook and we got pizza and ice cream at the little turtle town uh, cafe and uh, they have some other more you know upscale restaurants right there on the property as well and then of course the big draw is Mount Rushmore, which is a 10 minute, if that, drive right. from where the campground is. So it's a beautiful area and just where it's located and situated in the Black Hills. If you've never been to South Dakota or if you are putting things like national parks and national monuments on your bucket list, this is a campground you definitely want to stay at. It is a little bit more on the pricey side being a KOA resort but it's well worth it for the experience, especially if you are traveling with children. They'll talk about that for years to come. We'll put a link below in the description to this campground so that you can make your reservations. Number four, Asheville. Asheville, North Carolina. This was a beautiful, beautiful KOA. In fact, we'll put a link to our video above on this one as well. But when we pulled in, I was so impressed with this particular campground. There's a beautiful lake. Yeah. There's like a bike trail. There were kids riding their bikes there and playing. There were kids all everywhere. Over the place. This was such a big family style campground. And as we started talking to some of the other people that we're seeing there, what we learned is that this is kind of the locals' campground. So a lot of people that are within a like three to four hour drive away this is the campground where they always want to come and so they come again and again and again because it's so family friendly yep it's just in a beautiful area kind of in the mountains area right outside of Asheville it's not in Asheville proper but just situated outside of Asheville and our kids it was amazing it was one of those experiences that reminded you of like 1960 <laughs> where you could just turn your kids loose and let them go and let them go have fun and let them go ride their bikes or go play at the playground. It was just one of those times where you felt like that you had turned back the clock about 50 years and you could just let the kids go roam and play. And they had fun. There was a stream yeah, that went, went through. Tubing down. With they, they jumped in the stream with inner tubes. I mean, this really felt like what life would have been like 50 years ago in another day and another time for kids to just be able to just go be kids. And so this is a campground we would definitely go back to. The Asheville area is gorgeous. There's Amazing. so many things that you can go yeah. do and see in the Asheville area. Including the Biltmore. Uh, we went and saw that. We couldn't take any video of that, unfortunately, but just an amazing um, building to check out, or mansion, might I say. Yeah as well as there's tons of mountain biking areas around. I actually met a guy at the campground there that uh, did a uh, mountain bike and he brought his along. So he invited me to go with him to go mountain biking. And it was one of the most amazing bike trails I've ever been on. Unfortunately, at the top, very top, right before you uh, go downhill, my I got a flat and I didn't have an extra tube. So I wasn't able to experience the downhill part. So I ran into a little glitch. I popped my back tire on my bike and unfortunately I did not bring an extra tube. We'll put a link in the description below to this particular KOA. And then we will put a link above to our video when we stayed there so that you can check it out. Number five, guys, this is the ultimate 
place that we stayed at. This was definitely the highlight of our travels this particular past summer. And like Ben said, the ultimate. And this particular campground is called El Mar Resort. And this is in Key West, Florida. Now, unbeknownst to us, we got the absolute best site in the whole campground yeah, when we arrived. Lot. Right, a corner lot right along the water. The lady next door to us was actually kind of complaining because we got the <laughs> We got the, the primo corner, site. Primos. And we didn't even know that that was gonna be the primo site or necessarily ask for the primo site. It just happened that that's where our rig fit the best. And so that's where they put us. So if you make reservations here, and we'll put a link in the description below for this RV resort, you want to ask for site number 11, which is the site at the very end, and it's surrounded by seawall on two out of the four sides. So there are half of the sites are waterfront, and then the other half are not waterfront. But the nice thing about this campground is, regardless of where you're staying, there is water access. So if you bring your water toys, your kayaks, your paddle boards, your jet skis, there is a launch right there at the campground that you can launch out into the water with. And so it's definitely a place that is fun to stay if you've got some of those water toys that yeah. you want to bring along with you. And there is a rental place right down the street if you do want to rent a kayak or something. There's definitely uh, plenty of places to rent one. There are no amenities at this particular campground other than your full hookups. So there's not a bathhouse, there's not laundry. You need to be prepared to use the facilities on board of your own rig. So one of the best things that we loved about this campground, having the site that we had, was the view. We opened up the curtains in our front window and we just stared out at the water and the palm trees. There were iguanas sitting on the concrete slab bathing in the sun. Two of them. Two of them. Maybe they love us. Yeah, it was really a cool experience to just see those, but also to look out and just be on the water and be surrounded by palm trees and you know, we had most of the windows open in the rig most of the time because privacy wasn't an issue in the particular site we were at because two out of the four sides were all surrounded by a seawall. So it was just the best view to have the windows open and to just enjoy the area. And it's very close to downtown or Old Town Key West where you want to go see some of the fun stuff that happens down there. So it's about a 10 minute drive. Yep. Grocery stores are super close by, so you can go hit the grocery store and load up with whatever supplies and things like that that you need. We also took several excursions um, while we were in the Key West area as far as snorkeling and ocean kayaking. And so we'll put a link in the description below for the company that we used for that, as well as you can watch our full video on Key West um, up above as well. So you can check that out and see all of the fun things to do in Key West. Probably one of our favorite trips so far is Key West. This was absolutely one of our favorite trips and we would definitely go back again. A1A. Detroit Avenue. I'm back with dead, yo. So I continue to A1A. Detroit Avenue. It's not Detroit. What is it? It's Beachfront. Beachfront Avenue? Yes. There's not an A1A in Detroit. I always thought it was Detroit <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> it's Beachfront A1A. Beachfront Avenue. Beachfront Avenue. <laughs> What's they the reason like... we throw that bag into the... Cornhole? Yes. <laughs> cornhole. <laughs> they have Cornhole. <laughs> Whoever came up with the name Cornhole? Yeah. Maybe, maybe they used to throw corn in the hole. Maybe. Maybe. We'll have to find out. We'll yeah. have to like look up the history of cornhole. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there were lizards. They're not that lizards, they're iguanas. Or, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there were iguanas that were sunbathing. <laughs> you were strange. Thank you so much for watching our channel. We really appreciate it. One of the biggest compliments that you can pay us is to share this content with others. So we invite you to use the share button, send the link for this video to friends or family that you know might be interested in seeing it. And of course, hit that thumbs up and then tap the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notified when we post our next video.